What is going on, everybody? I am the original gamer, Stevie Stroh, and we are back for another Color Computer Game Showcase. The game we're going to showcase today is called Moon Shuttle. And with me to help explain what Moon Shuttle is, is this person over here who I'm trying to poke in the ear over here. Um, Curtis Boyle from the Color Computer Games List website. This is the person who has a website that's got all kinds of facts and information that I usually typically ignore whenever I talk about a game. Some so of I them get, are even true. Yes, I usually get all the information wrong. So rather than me screwing it up, and quite frankly, just because I'm lazy, I'd rather have Curtis tell you about the game Moon Shuttle, who makes it, what it's about, and um, take it away, Curtis. Okay, Moon Shuttle is one of those rare Coco 1 2 games that's an actual official arcade port. It's not a clone or anything else, it's actually licensed. I'm an original arcade game by, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Nit, Nit, Nitiko Butsu or something like that? Uh, which, tight. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, so the game came out in the arcade 1981, was not a very popular game, even in the arcade. Um, I'm not quite sure why Datasoft picked it as one of the ones to get official licensing paid for. Um, it is also one of the licensed games that Datasoft did, the only one that I know of that did not actually get sold in Radio Shack stores eventually. There are other ones like Zaxxon. And Puyan actually were sold to Radio Shack after a few months. This one did not get picked up. It was only sold directly by Datasoft. Okay. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Puyan and Zaxxon, yes, but this one never Okay. Came That's okay. interesting. So it kind of alternates, right? It alternates between trying to clear a, um, a uh, field of asteroids that you're slowly being kind of pushed towards. Yeah, and you and can so fly you, a little bit faster to get through once you've created all right. those again. And then every other second wave, you're fighting waves of aliens. And the aliens actually do change and get a bit more difficult uh, as each wave goes so progresses. The asteroid field also changes colors and also speeds up. So instead of being very, very slow, it's going to be very Right. It, I did notice that about this game back in the day. I'm doing really bad, too. Um, you start, everything starts off slow, but it does pick up. Okay, so now we're just alternated, right? So even now, the second time around, they're moving a little bit faster. Now, I'm gradually moving forward. I cannot change the fact that I'm moving forward, but I can push myself forward if I want to um, accelerate that trip and try to... You're, it's basically you're dodging these things. And even now, they are um, moving a little bit faster, but each time they get faster and faster, right? Yeah, it's actually get going quite quick if you have to. And then it's just a wave of um, shooting ships. So this would be similar to Galaxians or Space Invaders. You know, you're moving in two directions and firing and shooting off bad guys with just different attack patterns. They look... Well, I, I did love the variety. They A lot of different looking ships, you know. So um, even though it's basically the same monotonous two levels over and over again, they did kind of diversify what the bad guys looked like. So it was... You play just to see what they would look like next. You know, what's the next ship going to look like, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, so they did their animated, too. With the right. Standard, just moving and, shape. You just saw the ship kind of flip on their side as they can attack you. And they want to get like, up to the shape. And right now, you know, and so you alternate between orange um, with white trim or white with orange trim on your asteroids. Yeah. Okay. This guy. These guys look like octopuses. Yeah. And when you shoot them, they explode into a laser beam, like a little lightning bolt, I should say. Yeah. That's a cool effect. And this was what was this was the same name in the arcade, right? Moon yeah. Shuttle was the arcade name. And what was the uh, company called? Michi Bon or something like that. Some Michibitsu. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing. Michibitsu Gazoon type, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just got killed. So it, was, like a, it was a much higher res game in the arcade, like the asteroid field. Your ship was much smaller in proportion to the asteroids in, in the Coco version. But they chose a lower res one here. I think they fit at 16K when it was sold on Disney. Right. Oh, look, there's a little, okay, that little thing there is a free ship, right? It's a little tiny ship that was scrolling through the asteroid field. A thing that gives you an extra life. So even now, this, the asteroids are moving faster. Multi, multi layers of asteroids here. There it is. I got it. I got an extra ship. Oh, don't let me die, dude. Okay, so I got the extra ship. That's cool. Oh, almost up to 10,000. Good. Okay, these guys are a repeat. Yeah. Well, I believe they're a bit more aggressive. Yeah, they're faster than now shooting at an angle. A little unpredictable. That's kind of neat because it looked like they were one and then they split off. So that was yeah. interesting. You 
booger. <sighs> All right. Well, almost 10,000. We've basically seen what the game looks like, but I will try it one more time just to see if I can beat the 10,000 points on this thing. Um, but it, it is a, it's a repetitive shooter. You, you basically rotate um, between these two levels here. Yeah, and it does get more challenging with the speed increases, the adding angle shots rather than just straight dead on. Shots. Yeah, yeah. The challenge this, level definitely increases, but the graphics and stuff after you've seen the first couple of ways. Right. And this fit into 16K? Yes. It's a very low res, I think it's uh, 64 by 96 or Okay. By 96 or it's pretty low. This is the same resolution as double back. Okay. Okay, so even here on this first round, they are shooting at a little bit of an angle, but less angular, more straight, straighter. Ah, oh, you little booger. They do should start off with a decent amount of shifts. Oh, yeah. My. It's also a button masher, as you mentioned. It's not a yeah. rapid fire. You it's can't not rapid fire. Uh. You get you gotta get your dexterity up on your old trigger finger there. Yeah. And at some point in time, if you don't take them all out, they just leave. Apparently. I think new ones are the, uh, are the asteroids or the aliens? Yeah, the, the spaceships. Because there was one or two left, and then they just kind of left. Okay. Also, as you as you start to clear the field, things speed up as well. Yeah. It's funny. They kind of look like pieces of popcorn. <laughs> and this is made by... Company made popcorn. Yeah, Datasoft. Yeah. That's the same program. James Garan and uh, Jerry Humphreys. Jerry Humphreys and... Yeah, they were later involved in stuff like Sands of Egypt and Blue Hands. And of course, the famous programmer there was the CEO. The Coca Cola. Yeah. Man, these things are freaking everywhere, man. Yeah, they're hard to hit when they're in the narrow mode. Yeah. So things are speeding up here. And I'm trying to button mash my way through this mess here. Can I make it? Yes, I can. Woo! And the squids. The octopods. Man, you gotta really bob and weave in between these laser blasts. Yeah, they fire a lot of rocks. They can be pretty quick. Yes, they do. They wow. Closer as they go. Bobbing and weaving, man. And you can only move up and down. Ugh. You can only move up and down here. You can't uh, move forward or backwards. And every time these guys run to the top of the screen, they inch closer forward to them. They are more challenging if you let them look through. Okay, well, you just clued me into something to do then. Don't let them get to the top. Okay. Okay, so I'm just shooting away here at the asteroid fields. There's my free ship, I got it. Actually, I don't know if you get the free ship and you shoot it. I think you have to actually play. I shot it. Uh, I shot the ship, it gave it to me. I did? Okay. Yeah. Oh, at least it doesn't make me repeat the asteroid. So I got killed on the asteroids, it just went to the next round. So that was nice. Cut me a little slack. Yeah, these guys are a lot more aggressive than the first time I encountered them. Ugh. And he make it to 10,000 points. I don't Wait know. And see. I don't know. You should notice, too, that I have on the side of the TV now, I've added this. This is my new layout for Coco Games. Um, we have a little um, promotional picture there for the Coco Crew podcast, right? So... Um, since this is now, at the moment, my new official layout for Coco Games, um, the Coco Crew podcast will be featured prominently in all of my Coco Games. So um, I have been listening to the Coco Crew podcast. I think I'm up to almost finished with episode um, 10. Uh, and uh, episode 11 was the last one, and they're getting ready to come out with 12 this month. Yeah, so I'm listening to the John Strong interview again in episode 10. Uh, I love listening to the Coco Crew podcast. I am a Coco nut. I will admit I'm a little biased, but I would have to say that they're probably the greatest podcast in the history of broadcasting on the planet of Earth. 
Now, maybe that's a bold statement, but I'm sticking by that one. You can quote me on there. Don't bother fact-checking it because it is true. Um, and you got to listen to the cookbook. Royalties for having their ads. They get tens of years of cents. We get microtransactions here, folks. So, um, yeah. So the Coco Crew podcast is, uh, you know, if you're into retro computing and you're into color computer stuff, you got to check them out. CocoCrew.org. Um, as I shoot my way through a field of asteroids. And it's just, it's adding up points. I guess every little piece of popcorn I hit gives me points. I might as well shoot them up, you know? Die, popcorn, die! Wait, now you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus 1,000. And you notice, too, uh, the sound effects here, the explosions, the shots, and the in-between screens, just common routines that Datasoft used a lot between yes. the various programs. Yeah, it does rem- the explosion sounds remind me of Zaxxon. Between the screens thing, it's uh, yeah. using kind of on and super. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they're arcade sounds. The, the sounds that they use, they borrowed from other arcade games of the time that use these sounds. So, okay. Oh, can he do it? No, he can't. I'm just shooting asteroids here, people. That's what you do when you're playing Moon Shuttle. You shoot asteroids. Okay. I am moving a little faster now. I got three ships. What do you think? Can I break 10,000? We'll see. I think I've figured these guys out. Going up and down? Yeah. <laughs> Just don't walk into their bullets, dumbass. So, this is catching. Yeah. There's one small flaw in that plan there. That was the time I actually walked right into the bullet. Okay. You might take it, you're not doing too bad. The bonus not doing too bad. Close. With the bonus, we just might make 10k in this game here. So I could, I guess, you know, what you're saying just wasn't as popular in the arcade, maybe wasn't as commercially successful on the Coco, maybe because Tandy didn't pick it up, too. I guess Tandy was either the pot of gold or the kiss of death for some titles, huh? Yep. If Radio Shack was going to put it in their shelves. Yeah, yes, 10,000. I think not to pick one who's actually you know, the rarity. I mean, Sands of Egypt, Dallas Quest. Man. Back on all of them for Tandy, so yeah. not pick one. Yeah, Zaxxon was on a cassette. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Sands of Egypt and Dallas, but you're both on disc. Yeah. So I've made the 10,000 points. So I think at this point when I die, we'll, we'll let it, we'll let that dog lie. Um, but yeah, it's a cool little game. It's worth showing. It's definitely worth showing. And it's it one is of the a, official arcade games. Right. Frogger was one of them. Zaxxon was one of them. Puyan was one of them. This was one of them. I can't think of too many more. No, not really. Uh, Arkanoid. Arkanoid. And page. Coco 3 had Okay, well, the Coco 3 had more, but as far as the Coco 1 and 2, yeah. you can pretty much count them on one hand. Yeah! Uh. Okay, it's the needle, the needle fish. Yeah, their angle shot the different angle right. Yeah, and there we have it, folks. And that is the game. Best score. All right, boys and girls. Well, I hope you enjoyed this preview of Moon Shuttle. I want to thank my special guest, Curtis Boyle, for joining me on this adventure. I hope you did enjoy this video and this preview. If you did, then do me a favor and smash that like button and subscribe to this channel. If you've got something you'd like to say, throw out a comment and let me hear it. And especially, we'd appreciate it if you could share this video and my channel with your friends don't forget to listen to the Coco Crew podcast right over here every month, available on CocoCrew.org. And until next time, we will see you all later. Long live the Coco. Coco forever. Keep on gaming. May the force be with you. Long live and prosper and all that good stuff. Peace out, everybody. Nanu, nanu. Bye-bye now. <laughs>